Today is Friday, February 25th, and it's Rick and Ksenia back with the weekly recap. Ksenia, it has been a very busy week. Vimon planning. We got the legends called today. And did we? Did we break the rule once again? Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, it's been a busy week. And uh, well, I have to tell you that, yeah, we did break the rule today, but it's a reasonable break. You know, it's only reasonable. four tabs open. Okay, moderate. I call it reasonable. Yeah, yeah. but we still okay. can ask uh, Michael Paul and Vinod 42. Usually Vinod 42 is to judge whether it's <laughs> reasonable or not. <laughs> but let's get it started. So first, I would like to talk about this post, and it was uh, written by Michael Paul. Here he talks about backups and uh, cloud security considerations in 2022. So I love this post because not only he talks about different strategies, right, but he also talks about different vulnerabilities and shared responsibility models and etc. And you know, from my perspective, I believe that we always have to keep in mind about shared responsibility model when we talk cloud, right? Because there is always some foundation services if you talk about compute or storage or database network and you know, all the things that cloud vendor responsible of and there's also lots of stuff like customer data so when we talk about platform applications um identity operating system network all this type of stuff you know it's you as a customer who's responsible for that so michael shared this and uh, you know other things here and uh, it's interesting interesting read very much so. And, you know, one thing I would add to this as a different point of view that actually aligns very well to what Michael has said here is that for every IT pro out there that's learning a cloud service, I really think you should put exactly the same amount of effort into learning security in the cloud because it's different. Right. There. And you just, you know, the the Corey Quinn report, the leaky buckets, right? They they have these showcases of things that are done wrong. And a lot of times you might not know that you've done something wrong, right? So always put the security right up the front. So great share. Thank you for writing this up, Michael. Yeah, thanks a lot. This is a great write up. OK, another one. And this one was delivered by Pascal. And he created a script that he also shared in script library. And he, you know what, Rick? It's his first article. Uh, so he's he made one it for recap. one, and he's on the recap. I mean, that'll get you in the Hall of Fame as a batting average in baseball. That's great. Welcome. Welcome to the Veeam community, Pascal. Yeah, so basically he created a partial script which uses the VMware Power CLI to read the changes from VMware disks uh, each time it runs and saves it as CSV. It's smart. Yeah, and it's interesting. It's almost like going to forecast your change rate, you know? Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you can even get to the point of forecasting how long incremental backups would change and things like that. Um, and, you know, it, it, you're right. He cannot do this with Veeam 1, right? Because Veeam 1 looks after, right? So the, mm -hmm. there's a lot to this, but uh, no, this is a great one. I haven't played with this script, but, um, you know, if I get uh, get a chance, I'll definitely give this a, uh, a try. Thanks for sharing, Pascal. Yeah, thank you for sharing. And again, welcome to community and congrats on making it to Veeam Community Recap. All right, another one was delivered by Michael Melter, and he's talking here about Veeam storage plugin for Data Core. And he also talks about how to define a role to access Data Core with least privilege. Yeah, so Data Core is one of those storage uh, platforms that Veeam has mm -hmm. a US API plugin for. And I remember when the blog came out, uh, I was actually surprised how much interest there was for this particular plugin. And I really like where uh, Michael's going with the least privilege. I'll tell you, for any storage platform, this is a very good principle. Do the work on your platform to get the very basic minimum explicit permissions. You know, I have that conversation a lot in the ransomware world, but honestly, it's just good administrative hygiene. So thank you for walking us through this on Data Core, Michael. Yeah, thanks a lot. This is great. OK, and last but not least, I would like to highlight the customer success story. Usually we don't have that many, you know, this type of content. It's something new, but 
I think it's cool. So Victor Wu, he's sharing his story. So it's story from the field um, and how he was, you know, so he had some in, he had environment, he had some requirements for his customer and he had to solve this puzzle. He also put together a table with a comparison of um, CRM project uh, product. I'm sorry, Veeam backup and application and also Veeam disaster recovery orchestrator. Um, lots of staff proposed your solution and what was the summary? And I love it because, you know, it shows that orchestrator had lots of features that fits, you know, the fits sometimes better. Oh, I hope that it fits always better, right? <laughs> well, it fits a lot when it, the, the, the environment is highly virtualized, right? So the big caveat right. with uh, Veeam Disaster Recovery Orchestrator is it does have to be a, well, currently it, it only supports VMware workloads, which I may have blown the roadmap without <laughs> even saying so. But oh. yeah, exactly, <laughs> whoops. Um, but no, for, for these environments, I mean, this is a great outcome that you can get with these validated recoveries, testing the RTOs and RPOs. And, you know, for the people listening, if you haven't given the orchestrator a proper look, I'll tell you one thing. Every day it will test your RTO and your RPO to make sure that they are both in the expectation that you want. So sometimes, you know, Ksenia, we've heard this phrase day two admin, which yeah. is the like after everything's implemented, how does it change? You know, this is exactly where the orchestrator product will help because it will watch over time as things change, especially with 10% data change rate, systems coming and going, great stuff. Thank you so much for giving orchestrator some love, Victor. Yeah, thank you, thank you. All right, so I think that's it for this week, right? Well, just getting back crazy with Vimon stuff and uh, special department stuff later today, but yeah, that's it for yeah. now. Yeah, thanks everyone for watching and we see you in community.